Well, it, it's only going to get worse. So, you know, it's, I, I think it's somewhat ironic that yesterday, um, you know, there was a Commerce Subcommittee meeting on the legislation for uh, data breaches and notifications. But I, I just think a company like Anthem and, and many other companies fail to spend enough money to upgrade, you know, their systems, their security, their firewalls. So there are things that they could do to prevent this from happening. You know, I don't know for sure yet, you know, but we do know that the hackers were able to um, gain access to their servers. So, you know, when was the last time that they upgraded um, anything in terms of their IT security? Who did this affect? From, uh, well, we don't know if anyone in New Jersey was actually affected, but Anthem, from what we're trying to find out, Anthem has not told us. They're not saying how many people are where. Exactly, but people in New Jersey could be affected because there are affiliate companies through Anthem um, that are also, you know, now been exposed. And that's about 67 million people. Um, the 37 million people that are directly enrolled with Anthem are, are for sure have been affected. What do you mean by affiliate companies? Affiliate companies, third party vendors uh, that work with Anthem, um, you know, doctors, hospital networks, things like that. So, what um, do we need? What, first off, if you're concerned that you might have been affected by this breach, what should you do immediately? You should get a copy of a credit report, uh, take a look at it, obviously look for any red flags, uh, accounts that don't belong to you, um, addresses, recently uh, added addresses that you have never lived at. So one of the things that the identity thieves do is they try to establish a completely new identity and they'll use a different name, a different address, but they're gonna use your social security number. So look at the report and then, unfortunately, in today's day and world, you really need to be involved in a credit monitoring program that also has the resolution services because people always say, Paul, what if I get the alert that somebody just tried to open up a credit card or multiple cards or they're leasing a car or buying a house? So uh, the average person doesn't know what to do. So make sure you have some type of resolution service that goes along with the credit monitoring. And I, I say it's unfortunate because the free services that are out there, are, are just inadequate. So uh, people are going to wind up having to pay anywhere from $10 to $20 a month mm -hmm. um, for that service. But it's the world we live in. Uh, yeah, Tom, tell me about these, a little more about these programs. These are not things that are offered through the government. These are not things that are offered those free, um, like what I did, the, the free uh, uh, fraud. The fraud alert, you know, so if you know you've been affected, you might want to even go take it a step further and put a security freeze on your credit reports. And that means that no one, including you, uh, would be able to gain access to your credit reports without first providing a PIN or a password. The fraud alert just says to creditors who are pulling your reports, mm -hmm. um, go an extra step in terms of verifying that the person is who they say they are. Mm -hmm. um, why, how would a credit report help me? Even if, like if someone stole my information yesterday, could they have you know, with the so that's where the monitoring comes in. The, the credit report is a snapshot in real time, and it might not help you if this is something that hasn't been reported yet. So that's where credit monitoring comes in. Once you provide the company with your information, mm -hmm. if it's used in any way that's not consistent, you should get an alert via email or text. Uh, tell me more about these, who does these monitoring programs. That you would have to, I guess, pay for. These are well, the shameless plug would be we, okay. better qualified, okay. certainly, uh, provides free credit reports uh, along with a monitoring service um, that really is, you know, it's, ours is only like six ninety five a month. So, again, anywhere from seven, eight bucks, uh, some of the higher ones, like there's a LifeLock, most of the people know because they do so much marketing. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're on the upper side, $20, lots of bells and whistles that I don't think you really need. You need to be alerted and you need to have the resolution service. Someone that's going to help you if someone's opened up the reports, what do I do? Well, you need to file a police report and you need to contact the creditors. And, you know, um, the average person spends about two years trying to undo um, what the identity thieves have done. And is this what, I mean, you know, what happened here, this breach? Do you think the company is doing enough to help? Like, do you think no, I think one of the things that you know I try and champion and the things that we talk about are all of the companies thus far, in my opinion, have fallen short in notifying the, the clients, customers on time. And then don't just provide a one bureau credit report. There's three bureaus. And so for that very reason, they need a three bureau credit monitoring uh, 
uh, solution and service. And how about letting them know they stole your email, Marcy, so be on the lookout for phishing emails that look like they're going to come from Anthem. And we know from Target and uh, Neiman Marcus and uh, Chase that the identity thieves emailed their clients and people gave even more of their personal information because they weren't made aware that these phishing emails are going to come. They have your phone number. So be on the lookout for phone calls. How you doing? This is Paul Oster from Anthem. Uh, listen, we're just checking on our customers to make sure you're okay. Uh, can you please verify with us your social security number, um, bank account information, it goes on and on. And, and people are in panic mode. Maybe they're rushing to work. They got a kid crying. And all of a sudden they give this information. And then it really becomes a, a bad situation. Anything else that you think that we need to bring up in this conversation for folks, whether you're, whether well, you're a customer of, of um, Anthem or not? Or not, right. So I so think the biggest thing for, for people to realize is don't become numb to this. You know, 2014 was the year of the data breach. Now, every other day you heard about that. And people say, well, it, it didn't hurt me yet. So what they need to realize is that the information is on the black market. It's being sold on the, the dark web. So it's only a matter of time before somebody buys it and uses it. And just because it hasn't happened yet, take the steps, be proactive in protecting yourself because obviously the government can't do it, the, these companies can't do it, retailers can't do it. Um, we lock our front doors, we lock our cars, we lock our phones, but we fail to lock our identities down. So. Take a couple of simple steps to protect yourself, and one of them being get involved in a credit monitoring program. Uh, identity uh, theft is the fastest growing crime, and it's going to continue to be that way because of our, you know, dependence on uh, doing everything over the internet. So, so a monitoring program. Any other thing? I mean, I guess keep an eye on your account, whether it's your checking account. Your, I'm, I'm assuming Absolutely, you can call and have all of your account numbers changed. You don't have to close accounts and get new accounts, but have the account numbers changed. Change your pins and passwords. And I say, you know, this is my job. I preach this every day, and people don't do it. They hear it and they go, oh, but it, it's, in, it's, it, it's an inconvenience. But if you don't do it, believe me, it's a far bigger inconvenience if you become a victim of identity theft. So change your pins and passwords, change your account numbers. Um, you don't have to get new accounts, but certainly change them. And then obviously you're gonna have to change, um, you're gonna have to alert the creditors. Maybe you have auto draft and auto pay and all that stuff. But if it takes you an hour, you're done. If you're a victim of identity theft, like I said before, it could take you years, and it could be financially, you know, uh, devastating along the way. And when you say change your account numbers, you mean like bank account, credit, uh, uh, checking account, savings account, that's right? Absolutely. Banks, bank accounts, checking accounts, credit cards, all of those banks and creditors will issue you new account numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, here's the thing. It's kind of uh, related to it, but people, everyone has debit cards now. But when you go to the store, the default is for you to use it as a debit card because the retailer pays less money to process that transaction. Ask to use it as a credit card. So when you swipe your debit card now, it says, what's your PIN? No, cancel it out and say, I want to use it as a credit card because you're afforded some more protections as opposed to a debit card that's linked directly to your checking and savings. So if they get that information, now they can backtrack into your checking account and savings account.